Hello, I'm Dr. Russell Blaylock. I'm a retired neurosurgeon having practiced neurosurgery for the past 24 years. I'm also a visiting professor of biology at Bellhaven College in Jackson, Mississippi. I lecture widely, I write a newsletter, I've written three books, and I spend most of my time studying the brain, how it functions, and mainly how to protect your brain. I'm going to share some of the secrets I've learned about brain protection with you today. Now the brain is the most complex organ in the body, but it's also the most complex thing we know of the entire universe. There's no man-made computer, no supercomputer that can anywhere match what the brain could do, even in its most simple computation. And the brain remains this mystery. We don't really know what produces consciousness. We're not sure where memory originates. All the different parts of the brain concerned with behavior, how we feel emotions, all of these things remain mostly a secret. But we also know a lot of things about the brain that we never knew before. One of the things that we used to think was that the brain never changed, that the brain we were born with was the brain we died with. This was based on the idea that the brain cells don't reproduce, and if they don't reproduce, the brain must not change. But what they've learned is that the processes connected to those cells change constantly. New synapses, new dendritic connections, new pathways are being developed in the brain constantly. They're destroyed and repaired, and they increase their complexity. And one of the startling things we found is the brain becomes much more complex the older we get. We call this the wisdom of the aging. The philosophers have written about this, but wisdom is based scientifically on this complexity where all these connections grow even into the age of a hundred years. And they did a study on hundred year olds and found that this change in the brain is continuous even then. We call this change plasticity. Now, in order for the brain to be able to become more complex and maintain its function, it has to be fed properly. It has to have adequate rest. And it has to avoid certain toxins. Now, the thing that's most important is feeding the brain properly, giving it what it needs. We know that the brain requires a lot of sugar, what we call glucose, for its function. That is its main fuel, at least 80% of the brain's fuel is glucose. It gets this glucose by metabolizing complex carbohydrates. We also know that the brain requires some very complex molecules in order to function and that it gets these molecules from our food. Now if we're not eating a diet that is consistent with supplying these things that the brain needs, our brain is not going to function properly. This can translate into such things as insomnia, difficulty thinking clearly, having difficulty with our memory, difficulty with our speech. So we see that it can have a profound effect. It can also affect our behavior. We know that violence, depression, uh, many of the obsessive behaviors are all related to diet and what we eat. Now one of the things that poor diets do is they increase the number of free radicals in the brain. We know as we age, the brain starts to develop more and more free radicals so that it, aged brains produce about twice as many free radicals and lipid peroxidation damaging products than do young brains. And we know that a lot of this is related to inflammation and to our diet and exposure to toxins. Now things in our diet that can increase free radical generation include high sugar diets, high carbohydrate diets, particularly if they're simple carbohydrates. These increase free radical generation and lipid peroxidation. We also know that the omega-6 fats drastically increase brain inflammation. So that if you're consuming a diet like the typical American diet, which contains 50-fold higher concentrations of these omega-6 fats than normal or needed for normal metabolism, drastically increases the inflammation of the brain. When the brain is inflamed, it does not function properly. We have brain fog, difficulty thinking, sleeping, trouble with our behavior. All of these things become manifest when the brain is inflamed. We know that many toxins can cause this. For instance, aluminum, lead exposure, mercury exposure, 
pesticides and herbicides all can increase inflammation of the brain and increase the number of free radicals in the brain. Now one of the consequences of this is damage to the mitochondrion. The mitochondrion is a part of the cell that supplies most of its energy. Now what we find is that because of this constant exposure to free radicals throughout our lifetime, exposure to various environmental toxins and poisons, and because of bad diets, the mitochondrion begins to lose its ability to produce energy. What this does, it, it makes the brain and the brain's connections much more sensitive to damage by these free radicals and lipid peroxidation products. We also know it makes the brain infinitely more sensitive to what we call excitotoxicity. Now excitotoxicity is a pathologic process that is responsible for a lot of the damage we see in strokes, head injuries, uh, autoimmune diseases of the brain, infections of the brain, and all of these are related to this uh, mitochondrial dysfunction. Now, when we're eating diets that are high in inflammatory chemicals like the omega-6 fats and high in sugar, that also accelerates this mitochondrial de decay. And we find that if you begin to change your diet, reduce the amount of sugar, reduce the simple carbohydrates and omega-6 fats, increase the omega-3 fats, particularly the DHA component, that the mitochondrion begin to function much better and can produce more energy. This reduces the damaging effect of this excitotoxicity and of the inflammation. So proper free feeding of the brain is very important. The next thing that we've learned is that this excitotoxic process can also be changed by our diet. If you're eating a diet that contains a lot of excitotoxin additives like MSG, aspartame, and uh, various other food additives that are known to be excitotoxic, it increases this excitotoxic damage to your brain and makes you much more vulnerable to damage by these excitotoxins and free radicals. We also know that even simple short-term exposure to these excitotoxins can produce inflammation and free radical generation in the brain that can last for very long periods of time, even decades. Most American diets contain a lot of these excitotoxin additives. They can appear as hydrolyzed vegetable protein, soy extract, soy isolate proteins, uh, carrageenan, so it's disguised in many, many names, and we're consuming tons of this every year. So one way to reduce excitotoxicity is to increase our intake of particular nutrients and follow a good diet. Now, the nutrients that are known to reduce excitotoxicity include DHA, pyruvate, mixed B vitamins, CoQ10, alpha-lipoic acid, transferulic acid, transresveratrol, and many of the mitochondrial stimulants uh, such as vitamin K. Now we've also learned that when you do increase the mitochondrial's uh, ability to produce more energy, that reduces excitotoxicity. Uh, what increases the ability of these mitochondria to produce energy includes riboflavin 5-phosphate, uh, pyridoxal 5-phosphate, vitamin K, thiamine, nicotinic acid, peruvic acid, L-carnitine, coenzyme Q10, and alpha-lipoic acid. So you get a dual effect of reducing the excitotoxicity and increasing and protecting your mitochondria. And the increase in the mitochondria's ability to produce energy can be quite substantial. We also know that one of the problems with aging is inflammation. As we grow older, our brains and our bodies become progressively more inflamed. By the time we reach age 75, that inflammation can become quite significant. Inflammation increases free radical generation in the brain. For instance, at age 75, the number of free radicals being generated is 10 times higher than when we're younger and the free radicals in our mitochondrion is 15-fold higher than when we're younger. 
So we see that this can have a profound influence. And as I said, the thing that we know that increases brain inflammation is a high intake of the omega-6 fats. This includes corn oil, safflower oil, sunflower oil, peanut oil, soybean oil, and even canola oil. These oils have been shown to not only increase brain inflammation, but increase the risk of such diseases as Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. We also know that high calorie diets, that is things that uh, contain a lot of sugar, particularly simple carbohydrates, also increase inflammation of the brain and they're connected to high incidence of Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease. When you're consuming these things in large amounts, it produces an activation of the brain's immune cells. Uh, these are called microglia. We're now discovering that many of the neurological diseases, even multiple sclerosis, strokes, head trauma, are all related to activation of these microglia. So if you're eating a diet that contains these bad foods, you're increasing microglial activity, free radical degeneration of the brain, and you're setting yourself up for a high risk of developing one of these terrible neurodegenerative disorders. Of concern with inflammation of the brain is obesity. We know that people who are obese have a much higher risk of developing Alzheimer's disease, particularly as they get older. And that's because the fat cells and the lymphocytes and the macrophages in the fat cells inside of our abdomen, what's called intra-abdominal fat, produces a very high level of pro-inflammatory cytokines. These are chemicals that produce inflammation. And so when you have a high uh, intra-abdominal fat content, your risk of a number of neurological diseases goes up tremendously. This is a reason to watch your diet as well, so that if you reduce your intake of sugars and uh, high carbohydrate foods, you reduce this inflammation. Now the brain lipid repair formula and the brain repair formula together contain many things that help these various conditions that we've been discussing. For instance, they boost mitochondrial function. They protect the mitochondria. They contain antioxidants. They contain various nutrients that are very powerful anti-inflammatories and reduce inflammation of the brain. And they contain things that improve the membranes of brain cells so that they function better and are more fluid, what we call brain cell fluidity. So we're accomplishing many of the things that we set out to do, including reducing excitotoxicity in the brain. So in combination, by using doses which enhance each other's strength, so that we don't have to use very high doses of the various components. We can accomplish the goals that we set out to accomplish and protect the brain. And we feel that based on the scientific literature, if taken over a long period of time in conjunction with a good diet, regular exercise, which includes brain exercises, as well as physical exercises, adequate sleep, that you will have a significant reduction and the degeneration of the brain. We thank you and wish you good health.